Okay, today I'm going to talk about the biomechanics of my vertical jump. So, to start off with, let's look at how I start my jump. So, I begin my jump by preparing to drop down into my into the uh, preparation phase of my jump, which is where you're basically in a squat position. So, I bring my arms up and I straighten my body. And the reason for this is I want to get as much velocity going down into my squat as possible because then I will get the most elastic energy stored in my muscles to then jump up. So, um, you can see the angle of my arms to my body is pretty close to 90 degrees. Not quite, but pretty close. So I could even raise my arms up just a little bit more to get as much you know, range of motion going up and then down as possible. And one thing I can definitely do is extend my hip more or even hyper extend my hip by driving my glutes you know through to my belly button to increase this angle here of kind of like my my hip basically my torso and my legs i want that as close to 180 or even more than 180 as possible because then i'm going through my full range of motion so i'll drive up and then throw my hips back to drop down into my squat. So the next phase that we'll look at is the first phase technically called the preparation phase. So as you can see, I'm swinging my arms back and I'm flexing my ankles, my knees and my hips. And my lowest point right about there. So what we want to do, or what, what we would want for in terms of biomechanics is um, one of the biomechanical biomechanic principles of maximum effort says that the production of maximum velocity requires the use of the joints in order from largest to smallest, which means we want ideally to use our hip joint first. So you want to throw your hips back as far as you can before you, as you start squatting down which I don't really do a good job of as you can see my knees are flexing pretty much at the same time as my hips which is causing them to go forward and kind of protrude over my toe if we can see right there we can see that line where my knee is is a little bit in front of my toe which we don't want what we do want is that hip to drive even further back so ideally it would be almost back to there and if I had driven my hip back first straight to there then my the angle of my ankle would not would also have been bigger and I would have been dropping more straight down rather than forwards. So if we go back to that preparation phase right there, we can look at all these angles. So uh, the angle of my ankle, let's see here. Okay. One second. Looking to be a little bit less. Okay, we'll say it's a little bit less than 72 there, but can't really get that. And the angle of my knee with my basically the angle between my thigh and my lower leg here about 90 degrees which is pretty good it's gonna vary person to person how deep you want to get down to that squat but we're usually looking for around 90 so it's looking pretty good there and let's see this angle here kind of between my chest torso and my leg 
is around 50 degrees and that's a little bit too low and we don't want to drop our chest that much forward because now my the momentum of my jump is going more forwards than up and we'll see that later when I actually do jump so pushing that hip back and increasing the angle of our ankles you know keeping the angle of our knees about the same and increasing the angle of my chest with my legs will help me get more vertical motion rather than horizontal motion um, so just to clarify here I have my ankle with dorsiflexion there of the ankle and it's an eccentric um, contraction and the muscles working here we have the tibialis anterior which I can point out to you right around there on the front is working as the agonist muscle and then our gastrocnemius and soleus on the back here is working as the antagonist muscle in the knee we have knee flexion this is also an eccentric contraction and we have the hamstrings working as the agonist and the quadriceps working as the antagonist and lastly in our hips it's another flexion so it's hip flexion another eccentric contraction and um, the quadriceps and the iliosos are the agonist muscles which are here and then kind of like in here and then our hamstring and the gluteus maximus are the antagonist muscles so there okay let's move all this and now we'll, we'll go into the next phase which is the takeoff phase uh, one last thing about this phase another way to get my chest higher would not to be would to be not throwing my arms so far back so it's great that they're pretty far back almost a hyperextension here you can kind of see this arm is kind of going like that um, but if I lower them a little bit more that will not push my chest so far forward and I'll be able to stay more centered over my body so the next phase take off phase so I'm driving my arms through to get that upwards momentum and what this is doing is it's raising my center of mass so my arms are coming higher my center of mass is lifting up which in turn is going to lift up my entire body so we're getting to this takeoff phase here where everything's extended right there okay so we have um, in this phase we have ankle plantar flexion here it's kind of hard to do an angle here but it's pretty close to 180 we'll just check this out yeah so we're pretty close to 180 there and um, in this plantar flexion this is now a concentric uh, contraction because our muscle fibers are shortening and um, basically agonist antagonists are flipped so now the gastrocnemius and soleus on the back here are the agonists and the tibialis anterior is the antagonist on the front um, let's go to the knees next I mean we can basically see this is 180 right there completely extended another concentric contraction um, the quads um, are working as the antagonist muscles and the hamstrings as the antagonist muscles sorry quads agonist um, and then we'll go to the hips are not we would also want those to be fully extended they aren't quite having that problem again so that's definitely something I can work on we'll look here it's about 160 degrees um, ideally we would want to be straight up and down here with my hips fully extended which will allow me to drive up with maximal height um, but in this hip extension uh, it's also concentric 
You have the glutes and the hamstrings, gluteus maximus and the hamstrings working as the agonist muscles and the iliosopes and the quadriceps working as the antagonist muscles. Um, and like I said, the higher your arms are, the higher the center of your mass will be, the more your body will want to go up. So, you know, I could ideally, my arms would be going, you know, basically straight up here. So I can work on really throwing those arms up and getting that full range of motion through the shoulder here and having my arms straight in the air. The next phase, the airborne phase, pretty simple. In the air, so not much, you know, muscle action going on besides just stabilization. So the less you move in the air, the higher you're going to be able to go and you won't have as much um, horizontal or uh, basically any movement that's not vertical. Um, we're looking pretty good here, not too much movement. Um, you know, your core is stabilizing you as you are up. And then we go to the landing phase, which is basically ends the same as the preparation phase. So everything's gonna be flexed again. So we land with good plantar flexion here. As you can see, my toes have just made contact with ground. And we have a angle of around 135 degrees there. And then I'm basically absorbing the weight back into the heels, dropping down into my squat. Not quite as low as before, um, but that's okay. So we'll look at the angle here on the knees, this knee flexion. About 100 degrees, so not quite as far down as last time, but still in a reasonable range. And we'll look at the hip flexion. I'm keeping my chest up a lot better than last time. Um, and you can see that my weight's a little, my center of gravity is a little further back than when I took off. It's looking kind of like right through there, maybe even a little further back. And when I took off, if we go back here, my center of gravity was much farther forward. So we can't, it ends up being the same line, but my center of gravity is going more through my upper body rather than through all of my body. So my landing was, uh, was much better than my takeoff. Um, let's see. What else we have here? One of the big problems is let's look at how far forward I go during this jump. So when I take off, my heels are right about there. And now let's skip forward to my landing. Oh, wow. And my landing is all the way up there. So that is a pretty pretty far distance to go, uh, considering that I was trying to do a vertical jump. So we have all this space in here that's wasted, um, basically, energy, momentum that could have been going this way up here. And I kind of talked about it earlier, but what I would need to do to fix this is when I'm dropping down into my squat, go back oh wrong way sorry when I'm dropping down here by throwing my hips back more picking my chest up and having my knees in more of a kind of like straight up and down and then my hips would be back here and my body would be more like this okay that's me this will allow me to jump straight up rather than this way which is kind of like where my body's heading so here I'll kind of go up more through there, which is a much more vertical jump. Uh, that's all for this analysis. Uh, I'll put the link down for my, uh, just kidding, I won't do that.